Intel's 12th generation Ultra Lake CPUs have been the center for attention within the PC hardware community. They finally brought forth a series of CPUs which are a generational leap over the previous series, compete very well against AMD's Ryzen 5000 series. Now the ball is in AMD's court for them to respond. Let's discuss that in this video. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. Last week, you probably got to read and watch numerous reviews on Intel's 12th generation Alder Lake series CPUs. Unlike the previous gen Rocket Lake series, which hardly improved performance and were seen as poor value, the 12th generation CPUs are much more competitive. The 12900K seems to trade blows with AMD's Ryzen 9 parts while being considerably cheaper than AMD's 5950X CPU. The 12600K in my opinion is probably the most intriguing and desirable part of, out of the whole stack. It offers multi-core performance that's just as good if not better in some scenarios than the 8-core 5800X and offers great performance in gaming while coming in cheaper than the 5600X's official MSRP of $299. Now if you want to learn more about Alder Lake and how it performs in specific applications or games, I I highly recommend checking out the many reviews that showcase just that. And also, if you want to learn more about what kind of advancements and improvements Intel brings to the table with their Alder Lake architecture, I did cover that in a previous video, which I'll have a link to in the video description. For this video, I wanted to talk about how AMD can respond to Intel and how they can claw back some of that leadership position they so boldly touted when they released the Ryzen 5000 series last year. As consumers, we should be really happy with how competitive the CPU market has become, as this will allow for companies to innovate, create better products, and bring better prices. I feel like AMD and Intel are going to be playing this leapfrog game now where one company comes out with a series and they'll be on top and then the other comes out and then they'll be on top and so forth. That's what we want, not stagnation. Looking on ahead when it comes to newer CPUs, AMD will of course be bringing some new products to the market. In early 2022, we know that they'll be bringing Zen 3D CPUs, where the models have this 3D vCache stacked right on the CPU die. This should help boost gaming performance significantly, where it'll put AMD ahead of Intel again for the majority of titles out there. If you guys saw the reviews, while Alder Lake is fast on average when compared to Ryzen 5000 in gaming, the performance differences weren't really that big. We're talking about a mere 3% lead, which wouldn't even be that noticeable. When AMD had demoed their Zen 3D prototype back in Computex 2021, we saw that in the titles they tested, there was an improvement of about 15% on average. And remember, that was just a prototype, which means the final product could possibly bring more performance after optimization tweaks and refinement. Perhaps those new Zen 3D CPUs will also boost considerably higher as well, which could yield more performance. If those same figures hold up in independent reviews, then I'd say AMD would be easily right back on top when it comes to gaming. Now, they didn't demo any productivity apps, and I figure the improvements could vary depending on the type of applications. If it cares more about single core performance, scales off multiple cores, or relies on CPU cache. I also heard that the 3D V cache would only come to their top of the line Ryzen 9 SKUs, as that would mean that we wouldn't see a 5600X counterpart with more cache, and that would be a shame as that would have been a great CPU to compete against the 12600K. But nonetheless, that could be their near future response to Alder Lake, and the nice thing is that we will see these CPUs being compatible with AM4, and that'll mean it'll be an easy choice for existing Ryzen owners on 500 and 400 series motherboards to easily upgrade. Unfortunately though, 300 series owners are still left out, and I actually wanted to discuss that as well, but later in the video. Then in late 2022, AMD would be releasing Zen 4 CPUs, which would be a brand new architecture on a new platform that will support DDR5 and PCI Express 5.0. Now Zen 4 is a long ways from now and a lot of the info we have right now is pretty limited and is mostly just speculation so I won't be going over that in this video as that's really a topic and discussion that deserves its own. So what are some things AMD can do right now to entice owners who are in the market whether it's for an upgrade or a new build to buy their Ryzen 5000 series CPUs? Well the most obvious and easiest thing for them to do would be simply lower prices. We have actually seen many retailers cutting prices for existing parts. I mean, Micro Center in the US had recently brought down the 5800X to $299 at one point, which is a really great price for this 8 core CPU, but it really should be the norm considering the 12600K exists. Now, one thing I wanted to address in my previous video was the DDR5 requirement. I wasn't aware at that time that at launch there would also be a selection of DDR4 motherboards, so the advantage of this is that you can buy one of those boards and end up saving quite a lot of money since you won't have to pay for expensive DDR5 memory. Also, Tech Power Up recently posted 
posted a great performance review showcasing DDR4 and DDR5 in various applications. I'll have a link to it in the video description, definitely check it out. The general consensus seems to be that right now for gaming, you can pretty much ignore DDR5 as it really doesn't offer any performance benefit over DDR4. And unless you have a very specific productivity app that uh, benefits from DDR5 and you're using it to make money, you can probably safely just stick to cheaper DDR4 for now. I'm sure that will change in the future, but the good thing is that when it does, DDR5 should be pretty mainstream at that point and hopefully should be cheaper assuming there's no RAM shortage or anything like that. With that said though, Z690 DDR4 motherboards are still on the more expensive side and they're going out of stock as they're more desirable, so you have to take that into account. Whereas for people considering Ryzen, they can easily go for a B550 motherboard which are very cost effective boards. But circling back to Ryzen, AMD seriously needs to announce some official price cuts for parts like the 5600X. Right now the 5600X just doesn't make much sense to buy at $300 when the 12600K goes for around the same price. AMD should really bring the 5600X down to $200 US or $220 at most and that would put them in a much better spot. In that scenario someone could look at it and say well I won't be getting the same multi-core performance but at least gaming performance is nearly the same for considerably cheaper. The same goes for the 5800X, it should be officially at $300 now as it runs into the same problems against something like a 12700K. The 5900X should be at $400 and the 5950X should be for $600 or $650 at most. If AMD can lower prices then I think they'll still dominate the DIY space for the time being. Now when it comes to platform costs, here things are already in favor for AMD. Generally their motherboards are cheaper, they use DDR4 and you won't have to worry about getting a beefy CPU cooler as the Ryzen 5000 series don't consume nearly as much power and don't run as hot as Intel's Alder Lake parts. So I don't think they'll see too many changes happening here. However, if there's one thing that still kind of disappoints me, it's how AMD isn't allowing motherboard manufacturers to provide updates for 300 series boards to support Ryzen 5000 and burn their early Ryzen adopters. I know this is a topic that's been discussed in the past, but I still want to re-emphasize that this could be advantageous for them. As of right now, if you have a great high-end X370 board and have a decent B350 board, your only options are to upgrade to Ryzen 2000 or 3000 and that's it. However, if someone is looking to upgrade, why would they pay near MSRP for something like a 3700X when the 5800X costs around the same or they could find a 12600K for cheaper? The alternative option here would be to jump to a newer platform, but some X370 and B350 owners might not be too keen on going AMD again after getting left out like that and might lean towards Intel then. I know I'd be thinking the same if I was in their shoes. However, if AMD allowed Ryzen 5000 support for 300 series motherboards, then that would make things a lot simpler for them. Imagine if someone had something like a Ryzen 5 1600 and simply dropped in a 5900X into their X370 motherboard. That would be a huge upgrade for them in every area for really not that much of a hassle and yeah sure the 5900X does cost quite a bit of money but you know they're not paying that money towards having to buy a whole nother motherboard, buy new RAM etc. Or even just sticking to the same core and thread count. A 5600X would easily outperform the top SKU from first gen Ryzen, that being the 1800X. It would give them a lot more opportunities here, they would be able to breathe a lot more life into their old systems and this can contribute well to keeping the planet clean as this way users will be reusing older hardware, there will be less e-waste. Like I don't understand why there are no updates for X370 motherboards that can easily run a 5900X without issues. Obviously you won't be able to take advantage of newer gen features, PCIe 4.0, smart access memory, etc. But at least the raw performance jump would be huge. I don't know, it just screams anti-consumer to me. Some people have theorized that it was the motherboard manufacturers that told AMD not to push for support for older motherboards so they could sell more boards, but I don't think that's true. A while back over on the Hardware Lux forums, a user posted a response from ASRock that stated AMD told them to take down an update they pushed for an older 300 series motherboard, which allowed support for 5000 series chips. And recently, users have reported that some A320 motherboards from ASUS got BIOS updates, which allowed Zen 3 Vermeer support, but nothing for the X370 and B350 boards. The 5000 series are, are selling well, and they will continue to do so, but if AMD wants to reaffirm their position here, they have a simple way of doing that, and that is allowing guys who supported you from the first gen series, and give them the opportunity to run something like a 5800X or 5900X in their system. I'm still using my X370 board today for my TV rig. It's got a 3800 XT in there, and you know, it's probably good for now since I'm only just gaming at 4K there, not really in a CPU bound situation, but... Heck, if I got the opportunity to put in a new gen CPU in there, 
I wouldn't hesitate at dropping in a 5900X. AMD, stop giving the 300 series owners the finger, help them out, and you'll appease a portion of your customers that could easily be poached by Intel at this point. So those were just some of the things I wanted to discuss with you guys based on all the discussion I've seen in the hardware community of how AMD could respond to Alder Lake. We have a new generation of CPUs to look forward to in the future, they could drop prices, and they could extend support for 5000 series CPUs to 300 series motherboard owners. While Alder Lake is a fast Fast series of processors, AMD could easily be just as competitive in other ways, and this is a really tight race you'll want to pay attention to. I hope you guys found this video to be informative and helpful. Let me know your thoughts down below. Check out the video description on ways to support the channel and for my other videos. If you guys are interested in more content like this, then make sure you subscribe. Thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you guys in the next one.